Hi guys and welcome to this watercolor tutorial. Before we start, this painting will be included in the inventory sale at Penumbra Gallery, so if you want to take it home for a super affordable price, check out their online store. The sale begins at January the 23rd. And if you are interested in more painting tutorials from me, both for watercolor and oils, check out my Patreon page at the $5 reward tier. And now I will guide you through the process of this painting. The title of the painting is Blighting Waters and I created it last year for the Halloween show. It was one or it is one of two paintings the other one has sold and both were so much fun to do. And I wanted to make two paintings that have a slight bit of darkness and maybe a little bit of creepiness but of course not too much because I don't really like very creepy art but I really like dark art. So this painting depicts a woman that is in my imagination uh, wandering through a swamp and she fell and then she kind of lost consciousness and is trapped in, in the fumes and in the very poisonous water of the swamp. And I really like to have those little stories and fantasy worlds behind my paintings, but they are not set, so they are all open to interpretation. And I really love if everyone has their own stories for them. So I really encourage you to just see in my painting what you like to see in them. And I started this painting by transferring my reference onto my surface. And in this case, the surface is paper, which I glued onto a wooden panel. And the paper is Hahnemühle watercolor paper, which I tended to use before I discovered my Fabriano paper. But both papers have their pros and cons. And I really like to paint on Hahnemühle paper when I only want to draw a little bit. When I want to draw a lot of things and I want to really go in detail with my color pencil, I use my other paper. But for this one, I really love the Hahnemühle fine art paper. And I'm always starting with my large calligraphy brush, which I got from Bösner. And this brush is really so helpful if you paint with watercolors. It is such a difference. If you only have those small brushes, you get nothing done because with this large brush, you can get really large areas filled out in a beautiful pattern-like way. And it always looks kind of cha chaotic and messy, but yet beautiful. So this brush is truly a treasure and um, I do not regret the, I think, 20 euro or so I invested in this because it's really worth it. And I'm starting out by filling out the areas with pretty abstract shapes and following my reference for the color palette, but letting a lot of things open and just get generating a nice abstract pattern which will be served as a background for my figure. What I also really enjoy with watercolors and which other mediums don't really have or which will be always a mess is just to splatter and splash around with those with the watercolor because um, they you can just wipe them out and they are not permanent on your clothes or something so I just enjoy making those splashes and they also give the painting such a nice extra texture and just abstract background element and after I'm pretty much satisfied with how my background looked I'm continuing with her face and I'm starting to build up the shadows to the light areas. So with watercolors you always have to work in layers and I, I'm i working from dark to light and I think this is a technique many watercolorists use. You can some, I've heard some are starting with very thick color. You can do that if you are very confident that you can succeed and don't <laughs> screw up which I from which I do from time to time so for this one I carefully build up the layers 
And on the Hahnemühle paper, the wonderful thing is that you can take off color from the paper again. So if you have dark areas and maybe you make a mistake, um, you can use a wet brush and get off some of the watercolor. And I use this technique to make a smooth gradients and smooth edges, especially at the contour of her face. And at the end, I continued with just drawing a bit with my color pencils over the face and just refining some details, lashes and just some areas to make everything fitting very well together. I also couldn't resist to refine the roses and give them a bit more of detail, but I didn't refine the whole background. I definitely wanted to leave some areas as abstract as they were because sometimes I'm overpainting and overdoing my works and then I have no abstract layers left and I definitely didn't want to do this do it with this painting. And I'm really happy how she turned out in the end and this painting is one of my favorite paintings and and I think my favorite part of it is the little skull next to her face which hides behind bamboo um, leaves. And another interesting thing about this painting is how I did the photos because for, for many of my paintings I'm doing the photographs of my own and I'm inviting models to my studio or at home and for this one the photos were taken in summer and I bought all those plants and I even put a plastic box on the ground and filled it with water and then <laughs> the poor model had to go in it and I just placed all the roses and plants and the creepy skull next to her face but it's only a plastic skull and then I took those wonderful photos and these photographs are really one of my favorite photographs I took and I think I created already four paintings of them and this one is the last one and maybe I will make another paintings of these photographs or I will have another photo shoot like this one with all the plants and the water it was really fun and a really wonderful experience I hope you liked this watercolor tutorial and it inspired you to create your own watercolor works. For me, when I just rewatch my own footage, I'm even inspired to just make another watercolor piece because they can be so much fun. And I know watercolor is a pretty difficult medium, but for me, it t it took about one year to learn the watercolor skills just by myself. So I didn't even had any tutorials. So if you're watching tutorials, it will just probably be even faster for you. And it's really such a fun medium and I just can encourage you to try it out and nothing can happen. You can just throw your paper away and take another one. That is just the best thing with watercolor. It's quick, it's easy and it's just so much fun. And if you liked this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And how about you? What is your experience with watercolors? Are you like me and you love everything about them or are you not such a fan of them because they are difficult to work with or not really opaque like acrylics or oil paint? Let me know in the comments, I'm curious. 